Hello and welcome to Victory Church. We are Kevin and Pauline Shattuck. Hi, we just want to welcome you to the service today and uh, we want to tell you that it's an interactive service so you can um, make comments on the right hand side of your screen. You can tell us where you're from. Do you live in Red Deer or do you live across the city, across the country, maybe Toronto, maybe around the world? Please just uh, let us know where you're from and uh, we will, uh, there'll be people commenting back and forth. It'll be awesome. Also, we have prayer requests, so if you have a need for a private message, just type it in below, and there is someone that's live that will respond right away. Well, let's open up our service with prayer this morning. Father God, we just thank you for today. We just thank you for the ability that we have to put this message online. Lord, we just thank you for each one that is out there as they are struggling, sitting at home. Father, I thank you that you are just with them this morning. Lord, just encourage them right now in Jesus' name. All right, and we also want to welcome uh, Dave and Pastor Dave and Tara Thordeson. They're going to join. They're going to lead us in worship this morning, and so we want to just uh, welcome them here. to the darkness You're the only right among the wrong You're the only hope among the chaos You are the voice that calls me on Louder than every lie My sword in free fight The truth will change Your name is power over darkness, freedom from the captives, mercy for the broken and the hopeless. Your name is faithful in the battle, glory in the struggle. Mighty won't let us down or fail us. Your name is power. Your name is power. I know it is written, hope is certain. I know that the word will never fail. I know that in every situation, you speak the power to prevail. Louder than every lie, my sword in every fight, the truth will chase away the night. Your name is power over darkness, freedom from the captives, mercy for the broken and the hopeless. Your name is faithful in the straddle, glory in the struggle. Down or fail us, your name is power. Your name is power. Cause when you speak, you scatter darkness, light arrives and heaven opens. Holy Spirit, let us hear it. When you speak, the church awakens a change is coming Holy Spirit let us see it when you speak you scatter darkness light arrives and heaven opens Holy Spirit let us hear it when you speak the church awakens we believe the change is coming Holy Spirit let us see it. Your name is power over darkness, freedom for the captives, mercy for the broken. 
can end the hopeless. Your name is faithful in the battle, glory in the struggle. Mighty won't let us down or fail us. Your name is power. Your name is power. Your name is power. Trust in 
the chasm that lay between us how high the mountain I could not climb in desperation I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night and through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul the work is finished the end is written Jesus Christ my Lord thankful that you are our living hope and Lord we just trust you today with our lives we thank you that you're involved in our lives we thank you father that you're protecting us and watching over us that you're bringing peace to us 
And Father, I ask that for each person that's watching this morning, that you would bring them hope as well too, Father. I just thank you, Father, for what you're doing. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. To start with this morning, I'd just like to uh, pray for our 40 days of breakthrough and uh, uh, as we started our Easter season, we have a box in front of the church where we had people fill out these cards, and we wanted them to um, put down some areas that they needed breakthrough in, and so we've uh, been praying for these um, things that are in the box every Sunday. So let's just uh, bow our heads now and pray for breakthrough Father, you know what each of those cards have on them. You know the areas where the people need breakthrough. And I just ask, Father, that they would absolutely receive breakthrough in these areas. Thank you so much, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Isn't God good? Thank you, Pastor Dave and Tara. You guys always do such an awesome job. I'm sure if there's any other church, people from other churches that are watching at home now, they're jealous because of uh, the awesome job you guys do with the praise and worship. I want to continue talking about it is finished. And once again, I am not going to be telling you that the world is ending or that we're all going to die. That's not the moral of the story. But what I want to talk to you about today is about the last words that Jesus spoke. Jesus said that it is finished. And when he said it is finished, he meant that he had accomplished the mission. He had did everything that he set out to do. And so because he accomplished this great mission when he came to this earth, we can live with hope. We can live knowing that the world isn't going to end because um, a few people are getting sick. I'm not trying to diminish uh, the coronavirus at all. I don't mean to do that. But I just want us to know that we can live with confidence and we can live with hope regardless of what the situation around us looks like. Jesus said the mission was finished and so God dealt with issues in our life. A lot of times we struggle because we try to accomplish things that God has already done in our lives. You know, last week we talked about how God had dealt with the sin issue. And how did God do that? He transferred His righteousness to us. I have a hard time wrapping my brain around that, that God transferred His actual righteousness to me and to you. We looked at Romans 5, the first verse of Romans 5, it says, our faith in Jesus transfers God's righteousness to us, and He now declares us flawless in His eyes. In God's eyes, when you have faith in Jesus Christ and what He did on the cross, in God's eyes, you are flawless. That's just incredible to me. And then the last part of the verse says, this means we can now enjoy true and everlasting peace with God. And I want you to know that when God sent His Son to this earth, they didn't do half a job. They finished the job, and our faith in Jesus Christ changes everything. That was last week, so let's move on this morning. Let's move on to John 10.10. Jesus said, I've come to give you everything in abundance, more than you expect, life in its fullness until you overflow. What an incredible thing. Jesus didn't do, like I said, half a job. Jesus didn't give us life until the coronavirus came. He made a way for us to live successfully now, today, whatever you're facing, if you're in isolation, if you've lost your job, Jesus made a way for you to live successfully. Jesus came to give us everything in abundance. And a lot of people aren't living in the abundance right now. I've noticed as I go out, and I go out very limitedly, so don't get on my case here. But as I go out, I've noticed that people are terrified right now. 
People are terrified because of what's going on for numerous different reasons. And I'm reminded of a passage in Jeremiah. The Lord said to Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 30, he says, Can a man bear a child? Why then do I see every man with his hands on his stomach like a woman in labor? Why has every face turned pale? And God is telling Jeremiah, as he looks, he sees every man with his hands on their stomach as if they're pregnant of all things, and every face is pale. And I think this adequately describes the time we're in. People are terrified. They're afraid today. And you know, I told Joyce a a few days ago, I told Joyce, I think fear is going to hurt us more in this country than the coronavirus ever will. So I want to talk to you this morning, how do we deal with fear? You see, fear makes us choose foolish things. It makes us make foolish choices. Making decisions out of fear can cause an awful lot of damage. I've learned in life there's two times where you never want to make a decision. The first time is if everything is going absolutely wonderful and you feel like you're on top of the world, you don't want to make a decision that, hey, everything is just going to work out and I'm going to go buy a new car or a new motorcycle today because I'm sure I'll be able to pay for it. When you're on the top of the world, you don't want to make decisions. But also, when you're fearful, you also don't want to make decisions. Fear can make you run in the wrong direction. When Jeremiah was just a young man and he was called to be a prophet, he was told to tell people stuff they didn't want to hear. God told Jeremiah, he said, God said to Jeremiah, he said, stand up and say to them, whatever I tell you, don't be terrified in their presence or I will make you even more terrified in their presence. Fear will make you make wrong decisions, but if you give in to fear, it will take you farther down the road than you ever want to go. When you start to panic, you'll start to panic even more. That's what God was telling Jeremiah here. If Jeremiah, because of the mission he had, if Jeremiah was going to start to be fearful and start to panic, he would become even more fearful. So I just want to warn you this morning, if you're giving in to fear and you're making decisions and they might not be the best decision. Stop and take a deep breath. And I want to show you how you can live without fear in this time. What to do? Know the truth of God's Word. In 2 Timothy 1.7, the Apostle Paul told Timothy, For God will never give you the spirit of fear, but the Holy Spirit who gives you mighty power, love, and self-control. Do you get this? God will never give us a spirit of fear, but he'll give us the Holy Spirit who gives us mighty power, love, and self-control. We need to have these things deep down in our heart. And we need to understand when we become fearful, we don't need to be afraid. And you know, the Bible actually has, in Scripture, has 365 times where it says, do not fear, do not be afraid. I've never counted, but I'm just trusting what other people do. If you want to count for me, that would be great. We don't need to live in fear. God never gave us a spirit of fear. If we operate in fear, we'll do a lot of damage to ourselves. So how do we fight fear? You know, I could just stand here and I could say, don't be afraid. And that could have some value to it because God, like I said, God said numerous times in Scripture when people were facing a big challenge, God said, don't be afraid, I've got this, you can do this. And so know that God is saying that to you right now. But also I want to just share some practical things. Some of them might not seem too spiritual But God made both the spiritual and the physical. So I want to share some practical things that will help you to deal with fear so you don't need to operate out of fear. The first point I have this morning is always remember that God gives victory over fear. If Jesus came to give us abundant life and he finished the job, that means he didn't give us life that was consumed by fear. The abundant life that Jesus gave us 
does not need to be consumed by fear. Always remember that God gives victory over fear. You know what Jesus told to someone who didn't have their life together at all? Jesus told them in John chapter 4, he says, if anyone drinks the living water I give them, they will never thirst again and will be satisfied forever. For when you drink the water I give you, it will become a gushing fountain of the Holy Spirit springing up and flooding you with endless life. Now get this, Jesus told this person who didn't have their life together at all, that if they would give their life to him, that he would give them living water. Of course, he's not talking about physical water. He's talking about um, spiritual water. And Jesus said, if you come to me and you listen to what I'm saying, I will give you living water. And some translations talk about this water becoming an artesian well. What an incredible thing when you think about it. But take a moment and think. I think so often we think when you give your life to Jesus Christ, it's just a whoosh and you get this, um, you get this water that's supposed to spring up with you and then, and then you go on in life and sometimes if you're like me, you wonder where's this water that I'm supposed to be getting. But you see, I think we make a mistake when we think this water is just automatic when we come and give our life to Jesus Christ. You see, it's a process. We grow into the water. If you think about it, God gave the children of Israel, he gave them the promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey, and that's still available to us. But the children of Israel had to go into the land, and they had to take the land, and they had to fight to take the land. I want to submit to you today that when, as you give your life to Jesus Christ, you're beginning a relationship with him, and you need to continue in this relationship and as you continue in this relationship, you will find more and more and more water springing up inside of you. This isn't a one-time deal. This is a growing thing. And as you grow and you grow and you grow, you find out that, that fear is just kind of a waste of time. It's not that important. So remember that God gives victory over fear, but push in pursue God, seek God. Scripture promises that if we seek God, we'll find Him. I need to move on. My second point is live with purpose. Live with purpose. I don't know if you remember, but a number of years ago, the news broadcast was that Osama bin Laden had been killed. And they were interviewing on TV, they were interviewing the guy who had actually done the shooting himself. And he said that he went into this mission thinking that he was probably going to be killed. You see, he had a purpose in life that was more than his fear of death. As I was briefly looking online to see why soldiers have the courage to run into battle, one um, soldier who was a medic actually said that when the battle was going on, he was too busy to be afraid. So my point to you is have a purpose in your life that's bigger than who you are. If your focus is on your purpose, it will keep you from being afraid. If you're living with purpose, if you're living with passion, it will help to deal with the fear in your life. God gives us such a purpose. For me, my life's goal, I don't know if you've caught it, but my life's, that's supposed to be sarcasm, by the way. My goal in life is to seek God and to learn to love him with my whole being. I want to love God. The Bible says that's a most important commandment, to love the Lord your God basically with your whole being. And that's my number one purpose in life. I understand God is so awesome and God is so good and God is so merciful and God is so loving and I don't know him very well and I want to get to know him better. I do know him a whale of a lot better than I did 40 or 50 years ago. But the journey is continuing. 
My second goal in life is to help other people find life in Jesus Christ. And you see, having this goal in mind keeps me from being afraid of the coronavirus. Having this goal in mind doesn't make me just wither up and, and want to stay in my, in my living room and watch TV all day. That is a waste of time, and I have found that that will make you more fearful. So have a goal. Have your goal to be um, what Jesus Christ would have it be. Our goal for this church is to love God, to love others, and to serve. And if you have a goal like that, and it's number one in your life, it will help you to deal with fear. My third point, my points are getting shorter, so relax. My third point is control your thinking. Turn off the stupid news. Most of it isn't right anyway. Well, that's maybe a bit of an exaggeration. But there's a lot of things that you see on Facebook right now. There's a lot of things that are on the news that just aren't even accurate. And all they're going to do is build fear in you. The media puts such a hype it, the media tries to get us so hyped up and fear just comes in. Sometimes I just turn the news off. I'm definitely not saying bury your head in the sand. I'm definitely not saying don't know what's going on. But if you are listening to news on the coronavirus for 24-7 and if you're listening to news on how the economy is collapsing, it's going to take your focus where it shouldn't be. What does the Bible say? It says, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And I want you to know that you can control your thinking. And your thinking and your emotions are tied together. As you control your thinking, you will also control your emotions. And the fourth thing, I'm going to step on some toes here. The fourth thing is get some exercise. Go for a walk. Do something. As you get some exercise, this releases positive chemicals in your brain. I saw on Facebook that one member of our church is running up and down the stairs in their house. I think that's a great idea. Let me just warn you guys as I've said this, please do not turn to your spouse right now and say what you need to do is to get some exercise. I don't recommend that you do that especially if you guys have been locked up in your house for a few weeks together. Don't do that. My fifth and my last point, basically, is avoid stimulants. Avoid caffeine and energy drinks, etc., especially right now. What they do is they make you nervous, and they will help to increase your fear. You know, the other morning I came to the church, and I was a little bit early, so I stopped and I bought a big coffee, and it was so good. And then I was at the church for about an hour and I had a text about a problem that we have here. Or that Jesus is the most important thing in your life. If it is, you'll come to realize like I do that you don't need to be afraid. That when those thoughts of fear come, you can understand that they don't need to be reality. And you can trust in God's love for you and you can live with confidence. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father, I just thank you for being with us this evening. I thank you, Father, for loving us so much. And Lord, I pray, Father, that you would give peace to the people who are listening this afternoon, whenever it is, Lord. I just ask, Father, that you would just Bless the people who are, who are watching. And Father, if there isn't anyone here who knows you, I just ask, Father, that they would open up their heart to receive you right now. In Jesus' name, amen. If you want to receive more of Jesus, if you would like to give your life to him, just say a simple prayer, something like, Jesus, I'm sorry for what I've done wrong. Please forgive me, and I want to give my life to you. So please help me not to live in fear. And I know that if you say a simple prayer, it will begin, you'll begin a journey with Jesus that you will never, ever regret. God honors prayers like that. But don't just do it to yourself. 
but tell somebody. Um, you'll notice on the screen, like it was mentioned before, you can ask for prayer. Um, tell somebody what you did, and I can guarantee you, your life will never be the same. Thank you so much for watching. Wow, that was amazing. Thank you, Pastor Chuck. I believe that was a word for today. Talking about fear, we can be so focused on that that we miss out of what God has for us. We have an opportunity that we can give uh, to the church, even though that we're not here in body, we still have the opportunity. And as he was talking about fear, you know, I got laid off this week, and my trust is in God. And the scripture that he gave me was out of Matthew six nineteen to 21. It says, do not store up treasure on earth where moth and rust can destroy or thieves can break in and steal. But store up your treasure in heaven where moth and rust cannot get at it and, and thieves cannot break in. Because where your treasure is, there your heart is also. We have many different ways. It's on the screen. It shows you exactly how you can give to the church. Amen. All right, so we just want to encourage you, and uh, I'm just going to pray for the offering. We thank you, Father God, uh, that uh, each one to give out of the abundance of their heart. I thank you, Lord God, that uh, this is a time where, yes, we have difficulties in society. Yes, we have difficulties at home, but Lord God, we need to trust you, and faith comes by hearing and by hearing by the word of God, and I thank you, Lord God, that it's your word. It's the faith that we have in you that will give us us the hope to move forward and we just give you praise and glory for that in Jesus name. Amen. Well that's pretty awesome. Uh, I'm excited to see how many people that we're going to have on uh, Sunday that are going to sign in and say exactly where you're from. Uh, this is going to be some exciting times uh, in the next few weeks that's coming. I know that you're in isolation but man don't allow that fear to get in there. Trust God and if, like you said, if you have prayer, click that icon that says, you know, you want prayer, and people will uh, respond and be able to pray as well. Pauline? Yeah, and if you've accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, we want to encourage you to uh, let somebody know. You can let our team know, as well as uh, let someone in your sphere of influence, let people know. And reach out to us, we will reach out to you. Um, and we just want to encourage you to keep checking our website, vcrd.ca. We've got great announcements that are coming your way for, uh, for Easter. And even though you're going to be isolated, there may be an opportunity to uh, play a little game with us and have some fun during this difficult time. There might be some visits going out. And uh, we just want to encourage you, check out our, our website, check out Facebook, stay connected during this time. This is a great time to reach out, the, the old saying, reach out and touch someone. Well, we're not going to physically touch people right now. Uh, well, we could touch our spouses. We're not going to touch other people, but we are going to reach out through the phone and use those cell phones. Everybody's got their own personal phone now. It's something that we all have. Use the phone and connect with people. Stay connected. That's, it's a great thing to do. We can grow our relationships, uh, our sphere of influence. We can get to know people that we actually never knew before. So Amen. this is a great time. Amen. Well, we're just going to close in prayer. So, Father God, we thank you for this message. We thank you for the opportunity as this word goes out, Lord, that we don't focus on fear. Lord, I thank you that you came, you sent your son for us. Father God, and I thank you throughout this time that we stay focused on you in Jesus' name. And just remember, people, stay connected, use your phones. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank you.